Thanks for tuning in to this edition of our live stream continuing series, this one specifically focusing on urogenital health in women. What am I talking about? Bladder, urethra, vaginal wall, potential for bacterial vaginosis that is chronic. I think women develop them from time to time, not that big of a deal. Chronicity is what we're after. Uh, chronic vaginitis, yeast infections, chronicity is what we're after urinary tract infections, chronicity. Now, I want to preface all this by saying if you've had some chronic issues and hopefully you've seen your ob or your urologist, or you've seen a medical practitioner, let's rule out there are other factors that could be involved here that are more structural, that are more medical, and that you need to deal with them. If you've done that and you're still looping, if you will, then we need to change what you're doing. Diet plays a role, and the role of good bacteria. Now, I, I have oodles of literature on probiotics. So probiotics and inflammatory bowel disease, probiotics and prebiotics and gastrointestinal disorders, probiotics and diarrhea, benefits of probiotics. I, I mean, the list just goes bacterial population and obesity and inflammation, constipation. Um, I, I'm just touching. Uh, probiotics in immune system health, digestive uh, com uh, competence of the future, benefits of probiotics. This is a, a medical research study on Med Medscape. How probiotics help people take antibiotics. How probiotics may prevent colds in children. You say, what in the world? I thought you were talking about urogenital health in women. Well, I am. Just making a point. The point is probiotics in human health and physiology are critical. Understanding the role of live good bacteria in human health is just awesome. And it affects everything from your mood to your concentration and focus, believe it or not, to depression, to the potential for obesity if you're imbalanced, to inflammatory bowel diseases, the list goes on. But specifically, can we relate them now to urogenital issues and symptoms in women with chronic issues. And the literature is pretty poignant and it's pretty black and white. Let me read you a summary statement, a conclusion of a research piece coming out of Shahid Behisti uh, University of Medical Sciences. And it says that they did a complete review, oodles of data and information on specific strains of good bacteria. It says, although different studies have shown somewhat controversial results, most of the studies have been in favor of probiotics in the prevention of bacterial vaginosis. Now, this is specifically bacterial vaginosis. And no adverse effects were, have been reported. Therefore, it may be helpful, this is a medical piece, to recommend daily consumption of probiotic products to improve public health amongst women. Now, I would qualify that. My wording would be that you must use specific probiotic strains to benefit women with chronic bacterial vaginosis, chronic UTI, et cetera, and using specific strains, okay? So this whole theme will be, can I begin to change the ability of the, the wall, if you will, of the bladder and the urethra? Can I change the acidity of the vaginal wall, especially for individuals with chronic vaginitis and vaginosis, this more with UTI, okay? And if I have chronic yeast infections, am I able to begin to change what's happening here if I can acidify? This is important. This is very, but boy, I've listened to your other, and viewed your other live streams and listened to your show and you talk about alkalinizing. That's a body-wide component at a cellular level. When we talk about vaginal wall health, I've got to create an acidic nature. So often what we'll recommend is for women to use boric acid suppositories with lactobacillus acidophilus right in there. We make it here in PA for patients in the area that we work with. If you're out of state, that's not something that we can do. But what's really interesting is that specific strains of good bacteria, in particular, we've combined them in our women's probiotic essentials, and it contains 
Lactobacillus rhamnosus, the GR strains, and Lactobacillus retiri, the RC strains, specific strains, ones that are documented in the studies, to provide benefit at what? Preventing being proactive because the treatments for bacterial vaginosis are things like metronidazole, clindamycin, they're pretty powerful antibiotics with side effects. You can use some of those intravaginally, some are used orally, they have side effects. And then you disrupt the whole microfloral balance in individuals. Chronic vaginitis often is a result of um, antibiotic use and an altered pH of the vaginal wall, okay? And then chronic UTIs can have lots of issues. You could have um, some fungal or yeast overgrowth. You could have a compromised immune system. You could have some other underlying factors that play into this, even from a renal and kidney health. And, and I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a naturopath and a clinical nutritionist and a pharmacist. I don't want to delve into that. This is about functional health here. So here's the theme. If I begin to use these two strains in high doses, what we see is we can change the pH of the vaginal wall. We can show adherence to the ureter walls and to the bladder walls, meaning that the more of these probiotics that I dump into my system, I begin to protect the wall lining I create greater adherence of these good bacteria. Hence, I make it less susceptible to bacterial components and fungal components to go in here and to set up shop and to begin to grow bad things. So that's when I talk about epithelial, epithelial adherence. I don't want to get too technical on you here. But you have to understand there's a mechanism. Oh, just take these probiotics and uh, do you have a rationale for it? I sure do. Secondly, what happens when I use these two specific strains? Well, the lactobacillus acidophilus strains in general, but we're, we've learned over the past 20 years that these two particular strains provide even more benefit. Well, why? Well, what we do is we alter the pH of the vaginal wall. We make the vaginal wall more acidic. So back to my premise, what I started with, well, you say that I'm supposed to alkalinize. Well, that's how you eat. That's body-wide. But if I can make a more acidic pH to the vaginal wall, it's shown to make you less responsive or less susceptible to bacterial infections if I create a little more of a altered pH and acidic pH, you can reduce the potential anyway for chronic yeast infections. And then when I drink plenty of fluids, I start to alkalinize my diet, but I begin to use high doses of these probiotics. I create more bacterial or epithelial. What's epithelial? Epithelial is the lining of the, of the tissue, of your soft tissue and I create more bacterial adherence, I make myself less susceptible because how bacteria do their dirty work is once they attach to the lining, then they begin to multiply. In essence, they divide. They go into growth phases. So they multiply, and now they begin to grow, and I create an infection. All right. So you keep flushed. You begin to use these two strains. You change the, alt the, the pH, you alter the pH, make it more acidic. You increase epithelial adherence, and they're documented to do that. So these bacterial strains can be very, very helpful with chronic urinary urogenital issues in women. Generically speaking, can probiotics be helpful overall? Yes, they can. We've learned so much in even the last five years about the benefits of probiotics and then specific strains and what they do. Now we've been able to even narrow it down. Uh, there are even specific strains that are critical to respiratory health and in individu individuals. Folks that have chronic bronchial and asthma and chronic upper and lower respiratory issues, can I alter and change that with all probiotics? Well, with most, but with specific strains, they seem to have an affinity for different parts of the body. Women's urogenital health 
you can change this by changing your diet, by knowing that you need to get away from processed foods, foods that have a lot of MSG related compounds, foods that are very acidifying. I know that's contradictory, you just gotta trust me on this because this, when you use these lactose strains, they are acid producing, they literally induce at a membrane level, not in your cells, but at a membrane level, more of a acidic environment which makes you less susceptible. This is good stuff. I think women that have had chronic uh, urogenital health issues over the course of years, you can greatly, greatly reduce your symptoms, help yourself. I hope this helps you. I believe that it will. We usually dose uh, women. We start them for the first couple of months, maybe a month, maybe six weeks at two a day, one morning, one evening. Go down to one a day as a maintenance. Watch your diet and so on. I, I think you can really provide some benefit to yourself. Women's Urogenital Health, I hope it blesses you. Thanks for being with us. God bless you. See you on the next video.